Everybody, part two talking about uh, macaroni at Alco Park. Um, the first video I put up was talking about him uh, arriving at Alco Park and uh, waiting for me to get out of the trailer. So I don't want him freaking out. I don't want him wandering off. I don't want him just leaving the trailer whenever he feels like it. Uh, it's really important that he hangs around with me and uh, waits and is patient about it. So. In the second part of this, he's still pretty jacked up. He's pretty ramped up. He's, he's still thinking that he needs to uh, leave. He needs to go somewhere. He needs to lead me around maybe. Uh, the, the amount that his feet move isn't proportional to the amount I'm asking him to move. And to me, that's a safety problem. It's, uh, uh, it's a big deal that a horse stands with me. If I'm calm, he should be calm. If I'm excited, well, he should just follow along. He should keep up. Um, so... Uh, in this in this clip that I'm going to show you, it, it's a series of exercises, and I'll narrate it as I go. But I wanted to introduce it. It's a series of exercises how a, a horse that can sort of lead off somewhere else, or kind of wander, or be looking around all the time. Each time they're doing that that disconnected activity. Um, you bring them back to you by changing a direction or by moving or asking them to pay attention to you uh, in a way that makes sense. You might be moving off somewhere. You might be going to another spot. You might be turning. You might be stopping. You might go a little bit quicker. Um, all of these things uh, can get their attention uh, to where you um, can have them stop doing what they're doing, whether it's looking off, whether it's trying to move off, whether it's trying to call over to another horse, uh, any of these things that say that they're not with you. So uh, you have to be really, really consistent with this kind of thing. Um, half consistency just means that they think they're going to be able to do it sometimes. And there may be a time when you really, really don't want it to happen. There could be children around, there could be other animals around. Um, you could be on a trail that is very narrow and you don't have a lot of space to move around. And you really want the horse to just pay attention, just stand there and be cool. Uh, you may be trying to get them through something a little bit difficult. Maybe there's some people, maybe there's umbrellas, maybe there's balloons, maybe there's plastic bags flying everywhere. I don't know. But um, always practicing, whether it's getting out of that trailer, whether you're on a trail, whether you're in an arena, um, whether you're in the paddock, it doesn't matter. Whether you're going from your stall over to your paddock or you're going from your paddock over to your pasture, your loafing areas, or in our case, sort of a forest. Um, each one of these activities, it's imperative that your horse is paying attention to you. They're a thousand pound animal, unless they're little guys, and then they're a little less, but all the same, they're very strong, very powerful. Um, and the more you practice with them in situations that might be a little bit stressful for them, like going to Alco Park um, for, for him, uh, in those stressful situations, if you can calm them down and bring them back to you, they'll learn the most. They'll They'll gather the most information from that. And that's obviously only after you've practiced a whole bunch in an arena um, and, and, and your leading is working really well. Um, so, uh, so check this clip out. Hopefully it's uh, helpful, uh, gives you some ideas, you know, things that you might want to do yourself uh, when it comes to taking your horse out and about. Um, all I'm primarily doing is just distracting him every time he's distracted. Um, and the distraction is actually to bring his attention to me um, so that we go together and uh, not as two separate entities kind of going along. Uh, and that helps, and it helps a lot. And it'll help him a whole bunch more when we get back into the arena or we're just here, you know, on our local trails kind of thing. He'll pay that much more attention because in a stressful situation, he's paying attention to me. Um, and he'll know what I'm asking for each time because it'll be very consistent. Each time I say, well, come this way, or stop and uh, he's got that figured out in a non-stressful situation so it makes sense so you really wouldn't want to do this unless you've got your leading figured out they know to follow you they know to respect the lead rope and the halter because um, uh, you never know when you're gonna need it so it's just a good idea to do good for safety um, so watch this clip I'll talk you through it a little bit and um, hopefully you enjoy it all right, moving into our clip or two we've got here at Alco Park. We've got Macaroni leading along with just the uh, the halter and lead rope. And because he's just paying attention to all kinds of other things other than me, 
uh, I'm working on just going around them in a circle and sort of cutting them off or leading them another way and paying attention to sort of what he is paying attention to. So my direction changes, I get in his way, um, we stop, we go, and I expect him to be responsive all the way around. So as you see there, he kind of follows me around. And then when I want to go right and go through him, um, he needs to understand that he, he should be stepping back and out of my way rather than getting his nose uh, off to the, to the other side of my body. <clears throat> he should keep his nose on one side of my body, so I'll block him to go backwards a bit. And then when he gets it right, I pat him, make sure to let him know he's okay, he's done well, and we'll continue on. And this exercise is done repeatedly. Because uh, as you can see here, he's sort of looking off. His ears are everywhere. He's he's really alert. Um, I would comment on his tail, but uh, in reality, it was pretty mosquito-y day, so uh, it's to be expected. Here we just have a stop. We're talking, um, and uh, he was paying attention until he sort of got impatient, decided he wanted to move a little bit. Uh, I do try to lead a horse on both sides of my body. So here I want him on the other side and I'll encourage him over there by swinging the rope a little bit. And we'll just go along and see if he can just pay attention to me. We can just go along together and walk. When he starts to get ahead of me, I'll stop. And I'll encourage him back. And I make a point to try as hard as I can to never have to get him with the rope at all. Most of my... Uh, direction to him should be done just by leading the lead rope in a particular direction whether that's back to the side or forward uh, he should be paying attention and I'll practice stopping a lot make sure that he's with me he is getting a little bit close to me so I do tend to put my hand up just because if he were to get worried about something he would he on the other side of him uh, he'd very easily come towards me here I just want him to pay attention to me so I'm just getting a little bit bigger uh, to get him to pay attention and he's quite keen to go around me because he's got somewhere else to go he'd like not to pay attention uh, but we just take our time and I'll block him making sure that maybe he'll stand he's obviously not paying attention to me at all he's looking past me looking around me um, so I just keep blocking the direction he wants to go in his, his rearing up there really is just because he thinks it works. It's worked for him in the past. Um, it's not quite out of him. Some some horses go forward, some horses rear up and go backwards. He's a rear up and go backwards kind of horse. Um, he will use his body to come towards me to ask me to get going. Um, but again, we're just getting him to take a step back and, and be as quiet and as gentle and, and uh, as small as possible. We're not trying to be big. The less we can do to get the more that we can get, uh, the better. So if he does good, I'll pet him. I'll let him know he's been good. He'll bring his head down a little bit, but that step forward is unacceptable. I'll back him up, get him to pay attention. A horse that isn't squared up isn't fully paying attention to you. So I'm always going to be asking for the square up. All right, so we walk on. Another exercise I really love doing with a horse, uh, especially if you've got lots to to, to walk around like this or riding. Riding is a really good one as well because they never really know where you're going. Um, but you've got these great uh, obstacles to go around that make a lot of sense and you just keep on traveling through. Uh, they've got to use their feet. They've got to use their, their eyes. Uh, they have to pay attention to your position. You can cut them off like that. Um, whereas they may have thought they could go forward through somewhere. Uh, and this encourages a lot that they should stay a little bit behind you. Um, everybody's got a little different way of, of leading a horse. I like mine to be just a bit behind me. Um, and if they're if they're in really good shape, then I'll have their head somewhere close to my shoulder. But if they get too far ahead, you get this problem where you can't get to the other side of them without them walking forward. So here I'll, I'll back them up and then I'll move over so that his back left foot plants on the ground. So with that kind of going along, we just continue on towards our ultimate goal, which is the water. And as you can see, he's while he's alert, his head is a lot lower. If I slow down, he slows down. Um, and he's paying attention a lot better at this point. So uh, it's really encouraging that. It didn't take that long. I'd say we probably worked at it for about 20 minutes or so. 
and um, and of course this uh, this video series will pick up again uh, when I go to get them into the water but that's leading a horse uh, when they're nervous or anxious you really want to get them with you um, and that includes just being a pest in a way so thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one